Beloved, we ask all to stand except the family. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. And whosoever believeth in me and liveth in me shall never see their end. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself? Mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Of strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight, as but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night, they are asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Now as Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Whereas in Adam all die, it's even so in Christ shall be made alive. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? With what body do they come? All flesh is not the same. There's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There also may be celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the everlasting one, celestial one, is the glory of terrestrial as is another.
He's already done. He's already done. He's already done. He's already done. What he said he would do. Anybody know the Lord has already done what he said he would do? I draw your attention now to what the bulletin says. That is a celebration of life. Uh, we come to celebrate. Uh, not that she left, but that she lived. We come to celebrate Sister Connie. Somebody praise the Lord right now. For when a saint goes home, it's different when a saint goes home. The pain is real. Oh, but the joy bell is ringing all over glory. For life well lived. Life did not get wasted. A transformative life. A powerful life. A giving life. A life worthy of celebration. We welcome you now that we would go into the order of service. We welcome you to the Charity Missionary Baptist Church, Sister Connie's church. When I first got here, she made it clear to me that this was her church. Shared by a few hundred others, but it was her church. And she never once had any, get, called me any doubt that she didn't love her church. Because she loved the church, the church ought to love her back. We come with the prayer of comfort by Pastor Kenneth Collins, son of this house. It will be followed by an Old Testament reading from Minister Calvin Boatwright. New Testament by a daughter of this house. In fact, the first woman ever ordained at charity, the Reverend Kathy Simmons. There'll be a selection and the angels of heaven will get a notice. Uh, Willie May Gather is about to say. There's a text message going on right now. I told the angels, y'all need to stand down right now. We, we're about to hear from heaven. And then I'll come back before the remarks and present them in the order that the program has them listed. Prayer of comfort. The Lord of the word, the word of the Lord and the selection. In that order, please. Somebody say amen. amen. Good afternoon to the family. Amen. And to bereaved family. Amen. I want you to know, amen, that you have my deepest sympathy. And note that Psalms 35 say, weep may do for night. But there's everlasting joy coming in the morning. Now let us pray. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and I know there's a cross for me. The consecrated cross I bear to death shall set me free. And then go home my crown to wear, because they are the crown for me. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bring the Holy Spirit in this place and saturate this place, Heavenly Father, so that those that are bereaved can be comforted right now. Realize, Heavenly Father, that you allow us to come together to home-going service, Sister Connie. Realize, Heavenly Father, that she's in a better place in the New Jerusalem. We ask right now, Heavenly Father, that you look over this family, Bring them close to together right now. Let them know that death is not the end, but it's the beginning of life. Earth has no sorrow, heaven cannot heal. So we ask now, Heavenly Father, that you come in right now, because we need you. Oh, how we need you at a time like this. We know why we know that death is not the end. Because we can have 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Because it's swallowed up in the power of the resurrection. 
Lord, and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will raise us according from the dead. See, going to the place that is endless life, no dying over there, no sickness, no pain. Every day will be Sunday, and Sabbath will have no end. She had to give up her earthly citizenship. Because with earthly citizenship, there's so much pain, so much sickness. But oh, on the other side, the holy city, there's no sickness, no dying over there. No sugar diabetes, no high blood pressure. There's no moon, no moon, no sun. Only the light of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Because Romans 5 and 8 say, absent from the body, as present with the Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for the yes right now that you allow her to live on earth but we know when our body cannot stand the pain anymore then here come grace and mercy to take us home and then now we in the new city the holy city right now but she know that everything gonna be all right she has a glorious body no more pain no more suffering we come heavenly father there's a family union in the sky we ask that you give a double anointing to the hands of this house who will bring the word to bereave that they can be confident right now, Lord, that they see mom or sister, brother, cousin, friend on the other side. We just got to believe and trust in and have to the word of God because we too got to go this way one day. So, Lord, let us prepare ourselves right now as the pastor trying to introduce you to S-O-N so you will get burnt by the S-U-N. We come now to glorify you, because you're worthy to be praised. You said all things give thanks, so we come to give thanks. We come to praise you, we come to glorify you, because what a mighty God we serve. And Lord, we come to end of our mile, around the last mile, we actually give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. The Job declared that the wicked should see some troubling, and our worry so be at rest. This is our prayer in your son, Jesus Christ, Righteous and holy name, and the believers of God says, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. I give my condolence to the family. You know, losing a, a mother is something. Oh, oh. I always love my mama. Yeah. She is my favorite girl. Yeah. You only get one, you only get one. Yeah. I'll be coming from Psalms 91, starting at the first verse. He who dwells in the secret place mm. of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him I will trust. Surely he shall de deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings, his feather, and under his wings ye shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day. May God add a blessing unto the word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 My condolences to the family. The scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, verses 12 and 13. And it reads as thus. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. Verse 13 and now abide is faith, mm. hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Yes. 
May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, and may the family be comforted. Let our Father, who calls our loved ones home, send you comfort and peace. He, he brought me out all right. He, he brought me out. All right, he brought me out of darkness, he brought me out of darkness into a marvelous light, he, he brought me out, all right. He made a way for me, said he, he made a way for me, he opened up the doors, he Open up the door yes. that I could not see. He made, he made a way for, for me. Church, he, he brought me out. All right. He he brought Connie out. All right. He brought her out of darkness. He brought her out of darkness. Into the marvelous light. He. Brought out. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, all right. Yes, God. He brought me out. All right. He brought me out. All right.
Ain't it good to know? Bless the Lord. I heard the singer say, I made it out. But the best news is I made it out all right. Let's thank God for Sister Gathers. I made it out all right. Pastor Collins, thank you for your beautiful, heartfelt prayer. Minister Boatwright for the reading of our word. Reverend Simmons for the same. We bless God for the choir. Give them a hand clap of praise. Our musicians and the charity family. We will now have remarks listed in your program. Brother Marvin Griffin, uh, followed by the son, Brother Marcus. Keep him in yeah. prayer. I say to you, brother, some of us have sat in that chair. Let no one tell you how to cry, how to grieve, or what not to do. Till they've been where you've been. They have no idea what it's like. Uh, we feel you. We know you. But can do we know it's hard? But the Lord has a way of making it fit together before it's done. Followed by her deacon, Deacon James Goss, one of the faithful deacons of the house called Charity. He'll be followed by Deacon Singing John Griffin Sr. She prepares to come. When I first got to charity, I didn't have a scorecard to keep all the players straight. Because I didn't know that the Griffins and the Gambrells and the all tied up together. I didn't know that the Simmons were tied up with everybody. And so I was quiet for a long time. I knew who the players were. But now I know. In that order, please. And then after Deacon Griffin will have rendered his selection, uh, Sister Vicki Stuckey, the church clerk, will come. And after her, we'll have uh, Deacon Griffin come again with a song that prepares us for the word from the Lord. In that order, please. afternoon, giving honor to God, Pastor Rivers, First Lady, officers, members, and friends. I come to you today with a broken but yet humble heart, because Connie and I were more than cousins, we were friends. And Nian, Marcus, y'all had a wonderful mother because she was always straightforward. If you ask her for advice, she would give it to you, but she wouldn't hurt your feelings about it. And nothing really got on her nerve, not even Rory. <laughs> <laughs> but she was really a nice person. And James, may God ever bless you for taking care of your grandmother the way you did. Every time I see you, I'd see her. But we grew up together. You'd always see me, Connie, and Floyd around on Liberty Hill. But then when we got to high school, uh, I decided to go in the band. But a lot of people didn't know that Connie was the number one volleyball server at Barnes Wilson. When Connie planned, that gym was full. Because her, my friend Sherry, they taught Margie Palmer how to do it. And Connie's nickname for her serve was the Karate Chop. <laughs> and once she got across the ball, the net, the opposing team had the devil trying to get it. But not only that, uh, you had a shot put lady. Name 
Ernest Dean Brown years ago. And then I know you're more familiar with Raymond Saunders from Burke High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the Bulldogs. <laughs> but before there was a Raymond, there was Connie Cochran. Connie could throw that short put almost halfway down the field. She was really good. So, yes, Barnes Wilson had the first one. That's right, Barnes Wilson, 1800 Pearly Lane, North Charleston, South Carolina, <laughs> 29405. Don't come growling at us, Bert. Don't come growling. <laughs> oh. But uh, she was real good. And she would give you anything you want. And at the last family reunion, when James and Connie came in, James, she, Connie told James she wanted to sit by Marvin. And we sat and we laughed. We had a good time. And I said, I'm so glad that you came out. And she said, yeah, I'm going to come to this one because I don't know about no more. And I said, we all don't know about anymore. And then she said, well, I'll let God work it out, you know? And last year, they had Michael and myself, our 61st birthday party over there. And I called Connie, I said, I know this is the day that you do dialysis. I don't want you to come, but I don't want you to hear it in the street. I want you to know it from me. And when I got up to make my remarks, who was there? Connie. Connie and James. And when I came down, I talked to her. I said, thank you so much for coming. She said, cuz, you know I love you. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Now, ain't that some kind of love? But from the words of the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, like any man, I'd like to live a long life, yeah. longevity. But longevity has its place. You see, today, church, at the risk of me sounding somewhat morbid, you see, I personally know that I've just about used all of the sand out of the hourglass from this thing we call life. No, I don't know how long or when it may be, but this I do know. It isn't as long as it has been. You see, I almost could start to imagine arriving at the pearly gates, signing in with Peter, talking to my Lord and Jesus, Savior Christ, talking to others that I've longed to see, such as my mom, my dad, my sister, my cousins, other relatives and friends. But I know when I gaze down that golden road, I'll see my Connie with her arms wide open, say, hey, guys, you know I love you. Oh, may God bless y'all today, and thank you so much. Good evening, church. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I felt that would have been a robbery if I didn't stand up and um, make reflections about my mom. You know, she, she was all the things that everybody say, but she was a lot more. You know, she actually showed me how it meant to have structure, be disciplined even when I was out there acting a fool. Come on, man. Yeah. But it ain't that I didn't know, I just I didn't choose to listen. <laughs> but as I got older, I started realizing that she wasn't really being hard on me, she was actually just being real with me. Yeah. You know, and not sugarcoating things for me, and then when I get out in the world, I get a side swipe, you know. Mm. She went straight to the point, you know, and like, like my mama say, she might hurt your feelings, but she ain't mean it in a, in a harmful way, unless you've been a person that she want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> you know, so, and, you know, my mom, she raised us, me, Anthony, and me, and for a long time, it was just us four. 
And that right there in itself speaks volume on her character and the type of woman that she is to raise two knucklehead boys and one girl. And Lord knows that me and my brother have been aliens at one point in time. But, you know, I just thank God that for grace and for mercy yeah. that I'm standing here before y'all today yeah. to represent my mama and my family. Yeah. And I just, I just can't give her enough praise and enough honor. Yeah. But I just ask y'all just to continue praying for me and, and my strength, though. Yeah. Good afternoon. My condolences to the family, Gambrell, Cochran family. Uh, whew. Family, I know how y'all feel right now, cause I sat there about three months ago, same same situation. It's nothing like a mom, nothing like a mom. And I was continuing to pray for you. But Sister Connie Cochran, I met her whew, almost 30, 37 years ago when I first come to charity. And I walked in the deacon then. And she had that sweet spirit on her. She worked on uh, the Pope at Ed and the Rosa Sharon Pope thing at the church. But as the years go on, I became a deacon. Her mom chose me, and then she chose me, and basically, the, Almost the whole family chose me as a deacon. But all those years going there, I got to know her more as we continue to talk through with her mom. And through her sickness and ail ailment, she continued to be strong and calm. When she got scripted with that wheelchair, she did not let that happen. A lot of people who get scripted with wheelchair will sit there and don't do nothing. But Sister Connie Cochran, will get in that wheelchair. She'll be coming down the street, and her grandson, James, is right there with her. James, the Lord going to continue to bless you, son, because you've been there for your grandmother yes, sir. all the way. And he come. Even when I go to the house when she's in sick commune, who be there? James. I asked Sister Connie if he ain't there. I said, where's James there? Oh, he be coming around soon. <laughs> and next minute before I leave there, he coming through that door. But family, I'm just going to ask you all just to stick together. Yes, Love each other. Yes. And Marcus, remember mom told you. Because I've been a hardhead, knucklehead too, mom told me. But what they taught us, they taught us for a reason in life. You can carry on with your family and go on. But to continue, if I'm here for you, just give me a call. And Charity Family loves each and every one of you. Thank you. Sure, say amen. amen. Let's say it again. Amen. To Pastor, to the rest of the pulpit, to my family. Cousin Marcus asked me to do this song. I'm going to do my best. Because I remember when we were sitting down there and I sang the same song. It's one of my favorite songs. Song to thank God for Mama. Because I heard the preacher say that. Ain't number one Mama. While your mom is still living, you need to cherish her. Because once she's gone, she ain't coming back. Thank God for mama. Yeah, I know. 
my baby John. She was there when I started to walk. And I thank God. I Resolution and loving memory of Sister Connie Gambrell Cochran. Trials dark on every hand, 
and we cannot understand all the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land. But he guides us with his eyes and we'll follow till we die. For we'll understand it better by and by. We the members of Charity Missionary Baptist Church along with our pastor, Reverend Nelson B. Rivers III, and First Lady Carolyn S. Rivers, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we bid a Christian farewell to your loved one and our dear member, Sister Connie Gambrell Cochran. We have the promises of God that death, which men most fear, shall be to us the most blessed of experience, dependent only upon one's perfect trust in him. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die. We thank thee for the life and the joy of Sister Cochran. May her family and friends live together in thy peace and love and in the hope which is the forerunner of immortality. To the entire Gambrell and Cochran family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow oh so great. But we want you to know that we share in this sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. The Charity Missionary Baptist Church family pray God's peace and blessings upon each of you. Humbly submitted on this 13th day of April, 2024, the members of Charity Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Nelson B. Rivers III, Pastor, Sister Vicki Melvin Stuckey, Church Clerk. The Gambrell family is filled with gratitude for your outpouring and expressions of love and concern. To those of you who have participated in these services, thank you. Thank you for the cards, flowers, and the telephone calls, the visits, your concerns, and your prayers. Again, we thank you. For each act of kindness shown, may God richly bless each of you. We have been strengthened by your unselfish devotion. Special thanks to Charity Missionary Baptist Church and the Low Country Mortuary. We pray God's blessings upon each of you. Thank you. Let's say amen again. Amen. Every day won't be like Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will be like Sunday. Come on and clap your hands, church. I sing this song. The devil trying to make me forget it.
like Sunday. Every day. Let's bless Deacon John Griffin for a 
no, Deacon John, that burden was heavy, especially the saying about your mother. In this season, seems like the death angel is on a ride. And every now and then we need to come to the house so we can make sense out of what seemed to be nonsense. That this day is coming. Whether it's a hundred or ten, it's coming. What will you be? And prayer is that you go to the place where every day will be like Sunday. And beloved, I greet you in the strong name of our Lord and our Savior. His name is Jesus. And he is our very present Christ to this family Mother Marcus your mama may not have told you all the time how proud she was but she would tell the secret about what it took to make you who you are and she wants you to know she loved you you made the proud as an entrepreneur and someone who was in the church, so many mamas cry long tears, having raised their children in church, and they can't find their way back unless she takes them. We honor you, Lakinda. We honor you for the faithfulness. We thank God for this family, uh, these siblings. I was going to say something about Rory, but I'm going to leave that off. Mother Eddie and the rest of the crew, these grandchildren, and James. Don't know what they put Chester in your name for. Because you ain't old enough to know Chester. Would you go with me now in prayer? Oh Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all of the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Thou art God, and beside you there is no other. Sweet heavenly dove with all thy quickening power, fall fresh on me. Now, Lord, make me a vessel of thy love, instrument of thy peace, and a herald of your good news. Remind me always, lest I forget, it is not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Amen. And thank God for the first lady who was in the house who represented last night. Give her a hand clap of praise. The deacons, the trustees, the officers, the deaconess, all the leadership of the house called Charity. We thank you for being present for this homegoing celebration. We remind uh, you all, as I do for every service, that funerals and home goings are not for the dead, but for the living. Dr. King reminded us in his great eulogy of the four little girls in Birmingham, Alabama, who were killed by a terrorist in 1963. He said, death is universal. It is life's final common denominator. We all must face it. Dr. King reminded us that kings die. Beggars die. The rich, they die. The poor die. The known and the unknown, the famous and the infamous, they all die. The innocent and the guilty, they both die. Beloved, you'll never get out of this alive. None of us came to stay. So I have a threefold purpose that you pray with me through, and I'm going to do three things in this eulogy, or words of comfort. Honor the dead, warn the living, and lift up Jesus. When I've honored Connie, warn the rest of us and lift up Jesus, I'll be done. Let me go straight to 
the word that comes out of the word, there's one verse of scripture among all as I traveled and studied and prepared and prayed. The Lord dropped one verse of scripture in this word for Connie's eulogy. And it's a familiar text. It's Psalm 122. If you're able, stand. If you have it, stand. All except the family. You won't have to stand long because there's only one verse. Psalm 122, verse 1 says this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I think it's sure enough for us to say it together. Let's go. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the doing of his word. You may be seated. I know some of y'all got excited. The scripture is short. Maybe the word is short too, but don't, don't fool yourself. I don't govern that. Pastor Collins, I bless you. Minister Boatwright, all the Reverend clergy who are here. We thank you for the outpouring of love and loyalty and support for Sister Kind and her family. The word I have, the Lord has given me is, describes Connie in a way that resonated with me. And the word is simply titled, she was glad to be in the service. She was glad to be in the service. If somebody next to you might not know as well as you do, look at them and say, she was glad to be in the service. And I believe the song say it one more time. She was glad to be in the service. This, this, this ascent song, this is a song they call one of the ascent songs that means going up yonder. And they were prepared and the writer was somebody who was excited that Saturday had come. For them it was Saturday, for us it's Sunday. They were excited that the day had come to go to the house of the Lord. <clears throat> and the person who wrote it said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you knew anything about Connie Carr, she was going to press her way to the house. No matter how she had to come, she was coming. I always marveled. I think Sister Rivers talked about this, and I tried not to talk about how folk come to church and how they worship because everybody got their own way. But I find it amazing, even miraculous, somebody in a wheelchair will come from home press their way across the street. And the traffic got to stop if she don't get moving fast enough. And she had one thing in mind. I'm glad that they opened the door so I could go in the house of the Lord. Everybody not glad to come to church. I've seen folk look on some folk faces like they smell something. And like somebody got them a job that they're not getting paid enough for. They're coming up in here and they're sitting there looking all and as soon as that amen come at the end it broke that door wide open I'm up out of here and some folk believe that God gives you more points for leaving early but Connie pressed her way and I met her she was leading our pulpit aid got the chance to meet her and her mother and her family and many, many times in the bed she would talk to us and sometimes sitting up and I was inspired to look out in that aisle right over there and see Sister Connie. And there's two things I knew for sure. We have in service and James done brought her to church. When you are really glad about being in the service, you can't wait to Sunday. And you get up ready to go and you understand that I might not get another Sunday. But every day will not be Sunday for me because this might be my last Sunday. But she said, I was glad they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad to be in the service. How long? One more time. Sonny, Connie is here one more time. She was glad to be in the service. I want you to look at the text that tells us how she got here. Some folk get brought to church. Some folk drive themselves to church. Some folk walk to church. 
Sometimes we fly back home to get to church. But no matter how you get here, it requires some effort. But for most of us, it's not much. Just getting in the car and going in the car to do the work. Folk will ask me why they, you don't get tired of flying. I said, the plane do the work. I just get on. I ain't, I'd much rather fly than drive. Because when I'm driving, I got to do some work. When I fly, all I got to do is pray. When the thing land, I say, hallelujah, I'm done, I'm good. <laughs> but to come to church when you're in a wheelchair, or when everything is not going well in your life, when you're having issues with your family and issues with your children, issues with yourself, and you still make your way, you ought to feel good about it, but just think about how much more it took for Connie to come to church. But the good news is she pressed her way. Somebody said she pressed. Her way. Oh, Paul, in his letter to the church at Philippi, says this in the third chapter, uh, these verses, 13 and 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So many of us spend so much time in the past, the present done passed us by. Then he said, I press on to reach the end of the race. I receive and receive the heavenly prize, which for God through Christ Jesus is calling us. She pressed her way. You ought to be celebrating that she had enough God in her. Enough love of Jesus and his gospel that she'd overcome hell and high water to get to church. And you could count on it. If she wasn't here by the time we got here, she's on the way. What would make you go to church when it takes so much? Because as Paul said, some of us believe we've already obtained it that we already got it. But I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You don't. The best you can do is press your way. Because you know, between last Sunday and this Sunday, you did enough stuff to be disqualified. You did enough stuff to be put out of the church. And a lot of us are glad, Marvin, that we live in a time when there wasn't no Facebook. Because Lord knows if there was Facebook when I was at Burke High School, I would not be your pastor. They'd have a campaign and say, no, not that Negro. No, sir. Marcus is trying to tell you he didn't give any details, but he knows what a hellion is. I know intimately what a hellion is because I imitated one for a long time. And even the whip, the belt, and cussing couldn't get you out of it. But one day in the church, the great separator, I called him last week the recycler. He took the trash I was, put it into the holy bin, and when I came out, trash was a stain in, I'm out. He's the great recycler. He's been changing lives for a long time. Somebody here got a testimony. I wasn't much, but he made me more than I was. I wasn't worth it. But look at me now. I was not much to look at, but he took the trash that other folks saw and saw something redeemable and made me brand new. So I feel good to tell you, Connie pressed her way. It was worth it. I know some folk, when they go to church, even when they didn't want to get up in the morning, by the time amen come, they say, it was worth it. I was glad to be in the service. How many times? One more time. Next Sunday, I'm going to be glad to be in the service one more time. Connie pressed her way. While y'all tripping, she was making it. Folk hating on folk who go to church. I ain't got time. That's a whole nother sermon. Folk messing with you about going to church. If y'all would just move to the side and let me move my way, I ain't got to argue with you, debate with you, and fight with you. Just move out the way. If you don't move, then I'm going to move around you because I'm on my way to the house. Because I found that in many places I used to go, I don't go anymore, but I don't miss them. I miss the church. She pressed her way. Paul was setting it up that he was saying, I ain't much, 
But Jesus stopped me on the road to Damascus and told me to go preach to the Gentiles. And he said that it will not be easy all the time. But Paul, you got to press your way. They won't love you all the time. Press your way. They won't welcome you all the time. Press your way. They're not going to talk good about you all the time. Press your way. Connie did not care. She pressed her way. Marcus and the family. Yes, Rory too. <laughs> there was. Connie had a way of letting you know who she loved and why she loved them. She was a gift. And unfortunately, we have the, the human eyes. We don't always appreciate our gifts. We're so caught up on what the package look like that we lose sight of the contents. It's easy to dress up something that's ugly. That's mean. You can put a suit on it. You can even put an orange wig on the head. You can put some expensive clothes on them, too. Them suits you can't pronounce the name of, it's called V or L. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know they cost a lot of money. And folk put them nice clothes on. And they walk around like they, and you don't know what's in there. But oh, when you catch them naked. Say, oh my God, I didn't know that's what that was. And I don't mean naked of the body. I'm talking about when the real person shows you who they are. When you realize you walk up on them, they're cussing you because you're not there. They talked about you like a child of everything but God. And you, I didn't know you felt that way. You've been running around hugging me and kissing me and saying all them good things about me. But every now and then, God has a way of showing you who they really are. Yeah. So family, you had a treasure in an earthen vessel. A treasure in an earthen vessel. Paul was the master of the metaphor. Look at what he said in 2 Corinthians, the, the second letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, says this, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Connie's talking now. Persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. What Connie was saying, y'all looked at my body and thought that I couldn't make it. Y'all looked at my body and made judgments about me, made shaming comments, content, comments about me. But I come by to tell you, she pressed her way because she understood if you're in America, if you're in the world, you're going to be persecuted sometimes. You're going to be hard pressed sometimes. They're going to dog you sometimes, but get up and press your way. Because Connie was telling us, I'm always carrying around with me the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he got up early on Sunday morning for a wretch like me. Doesn't matter what you say about me. Doesn't matter how you judge me by what my body looks like. You don't count. You ain't got nothing to do where I'm going. In fact, all you're trying to do is block me from getting there. Go make me cuss in church. I'm trying not to. Go make me give somebody the side eye because you up in my Kool-Aid, don't even know the flavor. Messing with me. But Connie learned that sometimes you got to press your way because God has made you an earthen vessel. I don't have time to explain what Paul was talking about, but back in those days of Paul, people had fine jewelry and expensive gold, and they knew if they put it in a nice container, folk would look in the container. But if they put it in something that didn't look like much and folk didn't want it much, they put a glass or a clay jar on the table. But in the jar was gold. In the jar was diamonds. 
in the garb, precious gifts. And Connie, doesn't matter what y'all think she looked like. She was an earthen vessel who carried a treasure. You could tell by the way she related to people and the way she related to her children, she related to her grandchildren. She was an earthen vessel with treasure inside. We're going to miss the treasure. Marcus, the kind of the grandchildren. James, I want you to know that she loves you. She told me all the time, Mama, she loved you. And she was so proud. And when you walk over, she, I asked, where James at? He on the way. So she always knew you're on the way. But Helen Baylor said in her testimony song, she gave a testimony for you, James. She said, when I was messed up, laid out in drugs, had an overdose, I had messed my whole life up. And she was thinking when she heard her head at the floor, boom! She realized that the reason she was still there, because she had a praying grandmama. Many of us have made it on grandmama's prayers. Many of us are here because grandmama prayed for us when we didn't have enough sense to pray for ourselves. Grandma, grandmama spent time with the Lord on her knees, calling on your name when you didn't have enough sense to call your own name. And grandmama's prayers saved many of your lives. Many of you can testify, you don't have to tell me, but I know it's true, that the Lord spared you not because of your own prayers that you wasn't praying, not because of your own holiness you didn't have any. God spared you because grandmama got on her knees and called your name, said, Lord, take care of my child. Lord, take care of the children. Lord, bless Bless my grandchildren. Take care of them. I can hear Connie right now. Lord, take care of James. And you know God answered the prayer because when that bus came down the street and ran into that building, James was out there. But what happened? The bus missed him, hit the building. God wants you to know that Grandmama was praying for him. Grandmama prayed for him. Grandmama said, not my child. Not my child. Somebody here can wave your hand and say, I know I'm here because Grandmama prayed for me. Marcus, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, sister. It was hard for me. I ain't got over it yet. Anybody tell you you're better? You might get better, but you'll never be well. All you can do is manage grief. You can't wallow in it every day, but anybody tell you one day you won't miss your mama, they're telling you an untruth. In fact, some days it's harder than the day she left because I find myself stuck in memory. And I go back and visit, and I got pictures. There's this, this conflict in the spirit. Do I want to keep the picture or not? And the answer is yes, you do. Because the, at some point, it bring back wonderful memories. But I knew you asked God the question, why, God? Why'd you take my mom? Or why'd you take her then? We have so much left to do. I'm looking for mama's smile. I want to know if nobody ever praised me, mama would. Nobody ever said good things about me to my face, mama would. So I know you asked God, Lord, why would you do it? And at a lot of funerals, they have this text, John 14. And they shouldn't do it at funerals because it's not a funeral text. But anyway, that's a Bible study. We ain't got time for that. So let me, let me show how to work for you in context. The message paraphrase says it like this. Her room was ready. Tell somebody Connie's room was ready. If you want to know why she left, her room was ready. And when your room is ready, you got to go. Look at the text. It says, John 14, 1, don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. This is Jesus talking now. There is plenty of room for you in my father's home. If that weren't also, if that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm going my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, let me help you now, to get your room ready, and say it again, get your room ready. I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. So you can live where I live. So the reason mama left 
It's because the room is ready. And when your room is ready, you got to go. Jesus made a promise. He said, when I get your room ready, the mansions is not properly taught or understood. There were not mansions in the sky. They're just a room in the house. The word mansion means room. And, 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 and that room was in the big house called glory. And so best you can ever get is a room in the house. But I got a, new, got a question for you. Connie got in the room because she had a reservation. Do you got a reservation? I just left New York. I went to the hotel. Somebody else made the reservation for me. But when I got to that desk, they didn't care nothing about that. You ain't getting this room until you put something down on it. And you got to put enough on it to cover the cost of the room. So guess what? At the Sheraton in Times Square, they don't take cash. They don't take any kind of card either. They want a card that got enough in it to cover whatever you mess up in it to get out the room. So how can they hold a room for you if you never made a reservation? And what do you guarantee the reservation with? I think it's the blood. If I had time, I'd tell you how to make your reservation. Romans 10, 9 through 11 says this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not might, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. And the 11 verse says, as the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. I know, I know, I know. Sister Kai and I talked about it. She loved the Lord. She knew the Lord. She gave the, her life to Christ. She was baptized. She's a member of the church a long time. And folk are always wondering what happened to their loved one. Your loved one will answer the question while they're living. If you don't know where they're going, it's what they do while they're living determines where they're going. Romans 8, 37, 30 and 39 said, this is Paul talking. Paul wrote to the church of of Rome, and he said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created, created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can shout because Connie had nothing to separate her from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's your shout. But what gets me is John 3.16 is the most quoted scripture in the Bible. It's in football games, basketball games, soccer games. And it said John 3.16. And what does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish in everlasting life. You know whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. This is the challenge. I give this to you who have not yet made up your mind you want a room in heaven. Don't read just 316. Go before it. 3 and 3, 5 says, Jesus answered him most assuredly, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you're born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So I want to end by asking you. We shouting for Connie because her room was ready. But I want to know, do you have a reservation on your room? Is your room ready? Yeah, I end every, I end every eulogy, every word of comfort with the same invitation. Because there ain't no time in your life that death is going to be more real than it is right now. And so if you ever had a wonder, am I going to die too? Yes, the answer is yes, you are. The question is between now and then, what will you do? And I come to offer you an opportunity because Jesus said in his word that most assuredly, unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
So my question is, have you made a reservation? If you did, would you put down on it? Did you put down just your words? Did you put down that salvation only come from the one who got up early on Sunday morning to save a wretch like me? So I want to invite anybody who has not given your life to Christ. This is my warning to you. If you've not given your life to Christ, you are not going to get to heaven. I don't care how much they tell you. I don't care how much they try to dress it up for you. The word of God has not failed in over these 2,000 years that to see him again, you've got to do what? You've got to come to him. You've got to confess with your heart, believe in your, with your mouth and believe in your hearts. I invite you right now before the word is over that if you have not given your life to Christ don't mess around any longer don't wait any longer press your wheel like you in a hurry you don't know what's going to happen when you leave I ain't trying to scare you my job is to tell you you don't have to believe it you don't have to do it but I got to at least tell you that ain't no guarantee but I shout hallelujah that sister Connie long time ago made a reservation over in glory and she said I confess with my mouth when I believe in my heart that Jesus is the son of God he rose from the dead earlier Sunday morning and he died for a wretch like me. Anybody know what do you do to get your reservation? You can't wait on mama. You're not going to get the glory on grandmama's tears. You're not going to get the glory on grandmama's fears. You're not going to get the glory on grandmama's testimony. You got to make room for yourself by yourself. I tell you what I learned the hard way. No matter what else they got, the only way you can get it, if you want to see your mama again, see your grandmama again, if they went to glory, ain't but one way to get there. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus is is the son of God so I want to know is your room ready is your room ready do you have a room over in glory how do you get a room over in glory do you have a reservation somebody said I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready to make a reservation over in glory I just want to know does everybody have a reservation Everybody stand just for a moment. Everybody stand just for a moment. The thing about it, doesn't matter how much you pay for it, it all costs the same. Not everybody is saved. I wouldn't be much of a preacher or a pastor if I didn't give you a chance to make a room reservation. And the good news is when you get to your room, you know how they're going to know it's your room? Got your name on it. You get inside the room, you see photos on the wall that remind you, this is my room. They go mama on that room, on that wall. Daddy on the wall, grandmama. Must be my room. So I, I pause right now. Extend the invitation to you. If you've never given your life to Christ, do it now. If you've never confessed him, do it now. So the question is, is there one? You can't talk your way out of this. You can't cuss your way out of this. You can't fight your way out of this. There's only one way. His name is Jesus. Through him, salvation came. God was around a long time, and God decided, I'm going to redeem the sinful world. I'm going to come in flesh as my son. I'm going to die for you. But between the day I come and the day I leave, I'm going to give you a chance to join your loved ones in glory. And sometimes folk believe that's so you can worry about how life will be after you're gone. No, Jesus changed your life while you're living. Do you want to live different? Do you want to be different? Do you want to feel different? So is there one? Is there one? Come down, come down. You don't have to join charity. We'll send you where you want to go, but don't leave here the same way you came. This is your chance, a breakthrough, a breakout. Do you have a church on? Have you been baptized? Have you given your life to Christ? We don't have a membership campaign. We got members. I don't want you to leave without you getting right with him. That's what he sent me to do. Is there one? Is there one? 
Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Tell the devil who's talking to you right now, leave me alone. I'm about to make my break. I want to be free. You've been talking to me all my life. I'm, I'm ready to tell you, shut up. I got to go tell Jesus all about my trouble. Is there one? Is there one? Mortuary will come and give us the directions. We'll now have the committal here at the church. And those of us who are traveling to the cemetery will go all the way with the family. But we're going to do the committal now. Ask the preachers to join us down front. And the deacons as well. All of the ordained. Reverend Rachel Seabrook to give us a word of prayer as we go into the committal service. The Father God, we once more bow our heads, Master God, to you and our hearts to you, my master. God, we continue to thank you, master, for all that you have done for us and you will continue to do. God, we pray now for this family. Keep them, master God, as only you can. Let them know, God, that you're right there by their sides. And master God, for those, God, that have not given their life to you. The invitation was given, master God, but they will give you their life so that they can see mother, aunt, sister, cousin. Master God, I thank you. Now God, we bless your holy name for this service, the homegoing celebration of one woman that you've called and set aside for such a time as this. We thank you for her love, we thank you for her kindness. We thank you for her gentleness, my Master God, and what she has done for you and your, for your kingdom while she was yet here on this earth. So God, now bless our pastor as well. Now, First Lady, keep charity now because we're all a family. Let us all remember this, that we will love one another in spite of ourselves and keep you in the front now. So God, we bless the mortuary for their service as well. And God, we're going to continue to give you the glory, give you the praise and the honor that's all due to you and only to you. In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we pray now. Amen. 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 For as much as it has pleased Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, 
ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Then the writer said, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, the spirit that they rest from their labors and their works do follow them. God be with us. God keep us. God lead us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. The very one present us faultless for the presence of his throne with the exceeding joy. Only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, power, henceforth, now and forever. And every child of the Most High God say amen. 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 Would you clap your hands for Dr. Rivers today? Amen. Charity Baptist Church, God bless you. This does conclude our services for that of our dearly departed sister Connie. We will review her remains in the vestibule of the church. Do ask that you remain seated until directed by the funeral director and or usher. We ask that you continue to keep this family in your prayers. What's in the days to come, they're going to need a phone call. They're going to need a memory to help them make it through this journey. Family, on behalf of Mr. C.A. Hilton in the Low Country Mortuary, we do thank you for entrusting your services with us. We pray that everything that's been said and done this far has made a stamp in your hour of bereavement. And if ever there's a time that you need us, we are just a phone call away. Remembering that a family that prays together sure enough, we'll stay together. If you keep your hand in the Lord's hand, he will see you through. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.